I wonder if the window was left open. Oh, no. I, I remember what's about to happen here. I could hear the birds chirping from outside. A chilly breeze hit my cheeks. Pale sunlight on my eyelids. Quiet, gentle shades of the surroundings. I felt the soft morning light coming on. Unconsciously, I picked up my glasses from my bedside table. I see. He, I fell asleep last night after talking to Akiha. My fists are slightly heavy, but I'm still better than last night. Good. I shouted to inspire myself. I opened my eyes and decided to greet the morning with a clean slate. And guess who's going to be looming over you? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I knew this was about to happen. Ah, you're finally awake, you son of a bitch. <laughs> but. When I opened my eyes, there was Arcoid's face. I was blown out of my thoughts by how much had happened. It's so white. It's as if my brain has turned to tofu. <laughs> Well, she might be about to turn your brain to tofu because of what you did. My mouth is frozen, forgetting to even breathe. Seriously, I don't know what's going on. Well, it seems like somebody's a little bit upset that you didn't show up when you said you would. Arcoid was right in front of me. This is my room. It was just after 9 in the morning. In addition, all Arcoid knows is that she's in bed in her boots. Oh, oh, uh, well, yeah. Liar, I promised I'd see you tomorrow. Arcoid's red eyes were not as beautiful as they should be, perhaps because she was in a bad mood. No, I'm not losing it. The fact that I've seen it so clearly makes it seem more vivid and beautiful than usual. Arcoid is staring at me. <laughs> yeah, staring daggers at you. That's very close. <laughs> a state of proximity where I could feel her breath, her body heat, and even the smoothness of her skin. Uh, think we might be getting some morning wood here. <laughs> the posture covered me as I fell. In martial arts, it's like being mounted. <laughs> In more ways than one. Wait a minute, Arquaid! Why are you in my room in the morning? I tried to yell at her and kept my voice as low as possible. If Hisui came into the room, that would be the end of it. Although I couldn't grasp the situation, I was able to reason that well. And just get out of my way! You can't just barge into people's rooms and ride them while they're asleep and ignore their human rights! You're an invader, aren't you? <laughs> you can't just ride people when they're sleeping like that. You need to ask permission first. What's with that attitude? The reason I came here is because Shiki broke his promise. What the hell are you doing keeping people waiting while you sleep all the time? Arquaid glared at me with a grimace. Promises. Yes, promises. Did I break my promise to meet up with Arquaid last night? Yes. Yes, you did. <laughs> He's just now realizing this. Finally, I was able to understand the situation. I understand why Arcoid is so angry. I get it, but that doesn't mean this is it. You can't seriously just skip a step and come into someone's room when you can just complain about it at the meeting tonight. The window was open, and it looked like someone had snuck in through it. Well, probably because she did. Well, I broke my promise, so yeah, it's definitely my fault. But breaking into someone's house like that is a bit much. This is not Shiki's house. Arcoid comes back at me once and for all. And I was really more angry than I should have been. I waited and waited for hours, but when I realized that you had reneged on your promise, I was surprised at how much blood rushed to my head. I'm not going to let it go on like this. I'm going to get in there and grab you and rip your head off. I'm not going to let a few words get in the way of that. It was a state of mind that I'd never experienced before. I try to stay calm, but the more I think about it, the angrier I get, and the more heated I get. 
Do you know what it feels like to be stuck in a bottomless swamp full of complaints about you? And the more you rage, the wider the swamp gets? I really felt like I was going nowhere. Arquay's red eyes were full of frustration, protest, anger, and complaining about me. Oh, you're right. It's irresistible. While I was ministering, I secretly checked to make sure my own neck was intact. Right, so I couldn't take it anymore and snuck in, but Shiki was asleep, so I decided to wait for you. I waited to at least hear your excuse. But Shiki, you don't wake up very often. I didn't have anything to do, so I just had to watch you sleep for a while. Yeah, Shiki's sleeping face was so quiet, it was scary. He was sleeping like a dead man, and I was afraid he would never get up. How do you think you look when you sleep, though? <laughs> Huh, if you were worried, you should have woken me up. I'm more worried about you being here. But I didn't want to wake you up. I don't know how I look when I'm asleep, but if I could sleep like Shiki, I'd be happy. It's a great way to make sure you're getting the most out of your sleep. When I did that, the feelings that had been welling up in me subdued, and then Shiki woke up. So you've been here all night then, all this time. Earlier, a girl came to wake Shiki up, but I didn't like her, so I turned her away. Oh no! Oh no, she she didn't seriously do that. Oh no, she just screwed us. Haha, <laughs> Arcoid said, smiling nimbly. Wait, what do you mean turn away? I'm not trying to be rough. See, I, I told you before that vampires have the magical eye of enchantment. Oh, she used her mystic eyes? I implied to that girl that Shiki had already gone to school, so she didn't even remember me. Oh, that's convenient. You're the one who said it wasn't memorable. What a pushy girl. Well, it seems that Arkwaid in her own way was concerned about our family situation. I know exactly how it happened. And I'm sorry about yesterday, Arkwaid. It's not like that apology. But I will never break my promise to you again. I promise. I assert, staring clearly into Arkwaite's face. Do you feel sorry for yourself? I'm sorry. I'm just realizing that the reprisals will be horrible. I, lying on the bed, I gesture with my hands, saying, I surrender. Arkwaite nodded her head in satisfaction, wondering where the grumpy look from earlier had gone. Finally, Arkwaid moved away from the bed. I can't believe her getting on my bed with her boots. Don't you think it would be hard to wash the sheets if there were footprints on them? I complained and pulled myself up out of bed. Arkwaid is in the middle of the room, watching me lazily get out of bed. You know what? What are you doing? What? I'm waiting for Shiki to change his clothes. You can't go out dressed like that, can you? Well, I'm not sloppy enough to walk around in my nightgown. Wait, what did you say, Arquaid? Yeah, I was thinking of staying with Shiki for the rest of the day. You're going to make it up to me for breaking my promise, aren't you? Arquaid said as if it were obvious. All day long, does that mean I have to skip school to hang out with this girl? What are you talking about? We have a school here. What? I told you I'm sorry, but you're taking school over me? Ugh. That being said, I'm weak. I glanced at the clock. The time was around 9 a.m. If I go to school now, I'll be late, and I'm also responsible for keeping Arkwaid waiting all night. And well, if I confess for a moment, I too feel that it would be many times more fun. Alright, I'll stay with Arkwaid for the rest of the day. But if we go out into the city in daylight, we won't find any clues, will we? Hmm? Don't worry about that part, okay? Because if you're just going for a walk in the city, it doesn't matter if it's daytime. What? Aren't we going to be looking for vampires now that we couldn't do it last night? Yeah, of course I'll find out at night. But it must be hard to have them help you all day, so I think it's okay to take a break for lunch. 
That's a fair point, but just the two of us walking around town, that's... After so many nights out, isn't that what people call a date? As a vampire, Arquaid wouldn't have such an idea, so she'd just say, take me somewhere interesting, really. From now on, I'm going to spend time with this girl, normally, without killing vampires? What's wrong, Shiki? Your face is red. In a panic, I hid my face with my hands and averted my gaze from Arquaid. Oh, this is going to be interesting. I do remember this part from the the, uh, the original game. We're going on a date with Arquaid. That's right. I've been alone with this girl so many times before. But that was in an emergency situation, because we were framed as collaborators before we were men and women. So, no matter how beautiful I felt Arquaid was, I avoided being aware of it. But if... If I just spend time with this girl, without any danger or purpose, I'm afraid I'll notice things I shouldn't. Shiki, hey, are you still going to school? There's no way I'm going. I said yes, so I'll go out with you. I said I wouldn't break my word. I don't know what kind of whim you're on, but I'm sure you can handle a walk around town. Yeah, thanks, Shiki. Let's go, let's get going then. Oh boy. What is thank you? Arquaid bounced and walked to the window that seemed to be the entry point. Hold on, I'll change in a minute. You can watch me out there. What, did you call me? Oh, I called you, but you didn't call me. I'm sorry to stop you. Just stay outside. I'll catch up with you soon. Yes, I'll be waiting for you at the main gate of the mansion. I've waited long enough, so don't make me wait any longer, Shiki. With a thump, Arquaid went out the window, as light as a cat. The trees in the garden swayed and swayed. Using the branches of a tree in the garden as a foothold instead of the ground, she disappears like a lithe cat. With the way she carried herself, it would be no problem for her to sneak into my room. This is no time to be impressed with her. I have to get out so Hisui doesn't find me. Uh, maybe go go out the same way she uh, she went out and came in. I change out of my nightgown and into normal clothes. After all, it was daytime on a weekday. I would be arrested if I walked around town in my school uniform. I open the door a little and make sure the hallway is empty before moving on. Since I couldn't use the lobby, I went out the window of an empty room on the first floor to the garden. I arrived at the main gate. I chose a secluded route, so it took me a while to get there. Arquaid was waiting. Here you go. Let's move for now, Arquaid. Kohaku will find us if we stay around the mansion. What? Oh yeah, if we're going, let's get going. Unlike her earlier clarity, Arquaid's reply was lackluster. What the hell? That doesn't sound like you. Did something happen to you again while you were waiting for me? No, nothing happened, but... I pronounced the word again with force, but Arquaid's reply was blank. Maybe you're not feeling well because it's daytime. You don't have to force yourself to go out. If you're in pain, you can stop. Well, I'm feeling fine. I was just looking at this wall and it reminded me of yesterday. You mean yesterday when you were waiting for me in the park? Arquaid nodded cryptically, yes. I jumped over here as fast as I could last night and snuck straight into Shiki's room. Now that I think about it, it's strange. I'm still wondering how we got back to- how Shiki got back to his room after he was just kind of lying against the wall and fell asleep there. I don't know why I was so angry at that time. I failed to fulfill at least one of my promises many times before. I don't know, Arkwade said, folding her hands in thought. Oh yes, do you think Shiki would understand? You always talk me down like I'm nuts, so you should know this. You know... 
If Arquaid herself doesn't understand it, how can I, a stranger, understand it? Oh boy, choice time. Uh, because you're selfish? Because you want revenge on me? It, it's not been translating the third choice. I don't know why, but it doesn't want to translate the third choice for some reason. Well, according to the walkthrough, it's because... It's because you're selfish. I think Arquaid is just easily angered. Basically, she's selfish. I told her exactly what I thought. I'm not sure what to say. I seem to have become very emotional since Shiki killed me. Well, I wonder why that could be. Maybe because Shiki killed you. <laughs> Arquaid nodded her head in satisfaction. Regardless of the truth of the matter, if the person is convinced, then the problem is solved. Your question has been answered, then let's move quickly. Even though we had nowhere to go, we had to get out of the Tono Mansion first. The only thing on the hill overlooking the city was Tono's mansion and the forest behind it. There is no playground that can satisfy Arkwaid. At any rate, we headed toward the station, the center of Soya. Ode, ode, ode. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Arkwaid descends the hill ahead of me. It's like a child who is excited to run an errand for the first time. By the way, Shiki, you're dressed differently today. What happened to your usual black outfit? Always in black. I see. I'm not sure what to make of this. Also, our school uniforms are not black, they are blue. Please don't fixate on people with dark images whenever you get a chance. You know, I don't, I don't think I can show up in a school uniform in the middle of the day. Today is a special day to explore a different city, right? That's why I've changed into a little bit more classy and casual. Well, I just changed my shoes from sneakers to leather shoes, but it's better than nothing. I see, it's special. Huh? Arquaid paused, as if she had thought of something. Shiki, stop right there. Turn around and close your eyes. Hmm, yes. Ten seconds. No, three seconds will do. What, does turning right mean turning around? She said it so casually that I followed her instructions without question. Turn around and close your eyes. I closed my eyes and then asked, what am I doing? I became calm. Hmm, watch me. I'm not going to lose either. Unbeatable at what? And I just felt some strange wind pressure behind me. Hey, what's the point of all this? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to say, yes, there is, when my mouth, or rather my thoughts, stopped. That's an interesting outfit. What do you think? I don't have to fight in the daytime, so I thought it wouldn't be a hindrance if I wore this. Oh no. <laughs> what the hell is this girl? What the hell is this girl? What's that everyday wear? What's with her? What's with the fur? What's with the ribbon? This is a great way to make sure that you get the most out of your time with your family and friends. Hey, am I becoming a different person than usual? Cute? Oh. Oh. I can't say it enough. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. <laughs> yeah, Arquaid used the, uh, her seduction spell. You know what? Cute? That's not what I'm talking about. This is outside of my understanding. It's outside of reason. Please don't tell me that vampires are even fully equipped with dating clothes. I've always been amazed one way or the other, and, and yet there's more up there. What kind of gravure idol is this? Is this some kind of anthropomorphic rabbit? Honestly, I want to take a picture of it right now. I mean, do you know anything but foul play, you creature? <laughs> hmm. I don't even know if I should keep my mouth shut. Now she's turned into a cat. It's a special occasion, so it better be this good, right, Shiki? Good or bad, you... Of course it's wrong. This kind of mental violation is unacceptable. I want to protest on behalf of humanity that she is a bad girl. But is there anyone on Earth who can say no to this Arkwaid? Good point. 
<sighs> I grit my teeth in frustration. I mustered up every ounce of pride in my body. Well, I don't have a problem with that. I replied to Arquade, maintaining my dignity as a human being. Although the unexpected turn of events took its toll early on, the, the advantage of the ground is ours. Don't worry, there's nothing to panic about. I must regain my composure and hold the reins of Arquade as before. Good. Arquade, do you have a place you want to go or something? I don't know, so I'll leave it to Shiki. Take me somewhere appropriate. Okay, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> What do you want to do for dinner? I'll take you wherever you want for dinner. He replied with an easygoing but highly challenging request. I don't know of any place that would please Arquade, but I'll have to think of one before we arrive in front of the station. Fortunately, I have a good amount of room in my wallet. Okay. A classic movie theater, a gloomy alleyway, a walk in the park. Uh, depending on the weather, I guess. Hmm. Um... This could be an important choice. <laughs> oh, hey. This is pretty much my idea for a date. The movies. It's not really a date, but how about a movie as a standard? And it'll be like that scene from Carnival Phantasm. As long as you have something interesting to watch, you won't get bored, and you can read each other's tastes and preferences by exchanging opinions after the show. Good. This is not a bad choice. At times like this, a movie theater is the place to be, and again, it's not a date. Sure, keep telling yourself that. It's always so crowded here. I don't really know what's going on here, but it's a concentration of entertainment venues, right? Walking through the city during the day alongside Arquade. On the way, or rather still in progress, people on the street are giving me glances. Needless to say, Arquade is not an easy beauty to meet. When people around me reacted that way, I became even more self-conscious, and I couldn't respond to any of the questions Arquade threw at me from earlier. Hey, are you listening to me, Shiki? I'm asking where you're going now. I'm listening. I mean, I'm already here. See, that's the movie theater we're looking for. That just, that just looks wrong. Cinema Soya S. City, I guess it says Cinema Soya SS, but it looks like Cinema Soya, Soya S. <laughs> Cinema, hmm, that means we're going to watch a movie. Was still too easy. The princess was clearly not in the mood. But now that we're here, we have no other choice. There was no way I could know where a vampire girl would be happy. When you've reached this point, you have no choice but to go to the movie theater, even if people complain that it's boring. Just come on in. If you're not happy, we can just split up here. Well, I'm not complaining, she says, even though she was just complaining. Sighing, Arquade follows me. My shoulders slumped and my back ached as if to say, You unworthy bastard. <laughs> She's way out of your league. I'm going to go get some tickets. What are you going to see? I'm working on, let's see, romance, romance, romance. They're all romance movies, of course. Is this theater made of sugar from head to toe? You've got to be kidding me. I'm starting to feel like going home too. I don't care which one it is, because they all look the same. How put up with boredom? It's a ship we're on, isn't it? They returned a phrase I heard somewhere. My mistake for not doing prior research on the internet. I'll pick the most interesting one I can find. I'll try to pick something that looks as interesting as possible. We stood in a short line and bought tickets for two people. Arquid is a foreigner, even though she is a vampire, and she would rather watch a western movie than a Japanese one, so she decided to watch a French movie. The screening would begin in 10 minutes. Um, 
Here you go. We have 10 minutes to spare before the show, so let's go to that coffee shop. It's hard to stay out in the sun, isn't it? I'm telling you, it's daytime. It's hard. It's sleepy. It doesn't matter. 10 minutes here is not a problem. Next time you say something like, you're a vampire, I'll get angry. Well, not like you're already angry. <laughs> I was pissed off at the speed of sound. But I may have been too careful. Arcoid is many times stronger than I am, so it must be depressing to be overprotected so much. Yes, ma'am. Let's kill some time here. We stop by the wall of the department store. Arcoid looks out at the crowd with a pouting face. I'm stealing glances at her profile. If I was going to be this grumpy, I wouldn't have gone to a movie theater. I knew I should have gone to a park or even an amusement park for a big splurge. That would have been a good idea. Well, too late now. Shiki. I'm bored. Do something. This is a quick one. I'm bored. Do a little trick. That one. So what kind of princess are you? What's something like what? Hmm. Like a game of Shiratori? Huh? Why all of a sudden? I furrowed my brow. Two men and a woman by the wall, a bit further away, were just playing that game. The words I love you, Lerman, everywhere, Montesquieu, and a string of others would make even me dizzy. This is why couples who don't mind being seen are... Let's stop. Shiratori is not good. Why? Those guys said couples waiting for a movie are supposed to play Shiratori. It's just a bunch of nonsense. Don't worry about it. Go scour the internet news on your cell phone. Really? But it looks like fun. Those two. Those two look like they're having fun no matter what they're doing. I'm not very good at playing Shiratori to begin with. It makes me sad when I do it. That's the only thing I reject at all costs. Yeah, he has a very firm stance against it. Uh, against it. Shiki, how weak are you at Shiratori? Do you have a small vocabulary? It's not that I'm weak, it's that I'm not good at it. I mean, it's boring, isn't it? Stringing words together. Okay, there's five minutes left. Let's go in. Here's your ticket. You can show it to them when you go in. They'll take half the ticket, but that's the rule, so don't get mad. I know that much. Shiki thinks I'm an ignorant woman, doesn't he? Oh, I don't know. I thought you didn't know much about human society. Didn't I tell you that I have a decent amount of knowledge? I know what a movie theater is. Arquade turned her head away and walked into the cinema. I knew it was a failure. It seems that bringing the princess to a movie theater only made her seem bored. Maybe not the best date idea for Arquade. We left the movie theater. The movie I saw with Arcoid was a romance. Not boring, but not particularly interesting either. It was a typical French film, with no exciting scenes and a focus on a calm atmosphere. Arcoid walks beside me in silence. I get the feeling she's not having fun. <laughs> the silence was awkward. If it had been at least an action or a horror story, Arcoid might have been a little more pleased. You know, Arquade, today just happened to be a good day for... Yeah, that was really interesting, Shiki. Oh, well, maybe she did enjoy herself. Hey, you think all the Arquades cried? I don't know what that was supposed to mean. I, d I don't know what, what the proper translation of that should have been. <laughs> as if there were multiple Arquades crying. I'm just imagining that as kind of humor. Just imagining that image is a little bit humorous. <laughs> no, but... Whether it's interesting or boring is a matter of personal subjectivity, but I wonder if it was that interesting. It was a, it's a big difference between hearing and seeing. I mean, I knew about it, but it seemed to be a trivial fantasy. I think the darkness was good for me. It wasn't noisy even though it was loud, and it was fun to have Shiki next to me. But most importantly, the content was good. I was amazed at how he could make up such a fictional story to such an extent. Compared to the detail of those scenes, the images I create are like child's play, and I'm really impressed. 
this really makes kind of backs up the fact that you don't know much about human society and you haven't been to see a movie ever. <laughs> Arquite smiled with genuine joy. She really enjoyed that highbrow romantic movie. Oh, really? Well, the building that looked like the Eiffel Tower was definitely worth seeing. But that's a clone of the Sky Tree, no matter how you look at it, isn't it? Huh? I'm not sure what to say. Was it boring by any chance? No, it wasn't boring, but it was average. I've got something else that's more interesting. No, that was really good. Hmm, I think your overall score is low. I'm not doing it right now because I'm out of season, but the big movies are several times less boring than that. To put it bluntly, the one I just watched ranks right below the middle of the pack. Surprise! So surprised she grew ears, or she grew cat ears. <laughs> you express your emotions in a way that's easy to understand, Arquade. I was not surprised, but rather dismayed. Arquade, who I thought was going to complain because she was so cold before seeing the movie, is, ge is getting excited like a child over one movie. It's a shame. There was a good movie on until yesterday, no complaints. If I'd known you'd be that happy, I would have brought you in for the night. What can I say? Not to be thanked, but I was genuinely, but I was genuinely curious to see what kind of smile this girl would give me if she did. I see. We have bad timing, Shiki and I. Arquite's shoulders slump in disappointment. That's true. I've been acting like a jerk all day. I shrugged my shoulders as well. Yeah, really. It would have been nice to watch Arquite frolic a little longer. But then, but now we have to go hunt vampires. We, we don't have time for that. It was now past 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and we decided to have a late lunch. Arquid and I wanted to choose a more expensive restaurant than usual, but sadly, our wallets are not that well off, so we had to make do with what we had. But I thought Arquid was rich. I want the place where Shiki always eats. And so on. So I had no choice but to come to the food court. I wondered if Arquid would eat these things, but I'll give it a try. After staring at the menu, Arquade ended up ordering the same set menu as me. I took a seat and faced Arquade. Arquade looked around and then with a practiced hand brought the french fries to her mouth. You're used to it. I thought you'd never been to a place like this before. Yeah, I've never been to one of these before. I've always known what it was like, but that's just my knowledge. I'm not sure what to make of this. Your clothes are normal, and you're rather adapted to human affairs. The image of vampires in the West in Vlav's clothes were so dated that I had a gothic impression of my own. Perhaps the vampire society has been firmly modernized. Well, it's not like I'm adapting to that process, but anyway, if you're, if you're going to be in a human civilization, you need to have the common sense to adapt to it. That's why when I wake up, I try to remember the information from that period before I act, but most of the time it's useless be because it's settled in a day or two. Arquade sometimes says these incomprehensible things. How can it be useless? I'll go back to sleep as soon as I'm done. I didn't know how long it would be before I woke up again, so I discarded all the knowledge I had learned and prepared for the next one. But that seems to have been a loss. I've only ever known the world through knowledge. I knew there was a group of people like this, but I never got to experience it. I see. But if you know it, then that's fine, isn't it? I was confused about the menu earlier, but I was able to order just fine. Of course, that's what I'm trying to learn to do. But that's just the numbers, isn't it? The world of information alone is true, but, but the feeling from incarnation has more core than correct theory. So this is what they mean when they say that experience outweighs theory. 
I thought, you can memorize a gazillion words, but if you don't actually try, you'll never get anything. Arkwait sighs sadly. Uh, I don't know. I think there's a paradox that theory supplements experience. That's coming from someone who only knows theory. Well, that's what I was a while ago. Arkwait's face grew darker and darker. Arkwaid made me feel depressed as well. I don't know how to put it, but I didn't want to see her face like that. Isn't that a bit premature? I think it's just that there are those who can compensate for experience with theory alone, and those who can overturn theory with experience. See? Look around you. There are so many different people in this store alone. There are all kinds of people, and not everyone is like you. Oh my god! Wow, Shiki's talking serious stuff! Well, you just were too. You said something serious, so I'm going along with it. Don't break up the conversation. Now that you've told me your story, you're telling me yours. Yes, I know. I know that Shiki is always willing to talk about what I want to talk about, when I want to talk about it. You usually yell at me, but if it gets serious, you'll listen to me, right? Ha ha ha! Arquid laughs merrily. I can't say it out loud, but her smile is really not like a vampire's. That's the thing. I don't know if I've ever yelled at you that much before. I must have been too narrow-minded. Once I made up my mind, I couldn't see anything else. I only need myself. I only want to be right. That's all I can think about. But you're right. There are so many people in the world who can do things that I can't do as a matter of course. I don't know why. Ar Arquaid reflected to herself in a gentle tone. I'm not going to change my performance just because I'm sorry. I like the person I am now the most. I believe that I am right after all. She smiled and said something brave, looked around again, and ate her hamburger with a bite. Trun crunchy crunchy. She eats this kind of junk food to dispel the image of vampires. I wonder why. Eating a hamburger doesn't look elegant no matter how you try to fix it, but Arquaid's food looks beautiful and out of place. What's with your face? You're looking at people. Oh, isn't this how you're supposed to eat? Arquaid hurriedly put the hamburger back on the tray. Wiping her mouth with a paper napkin, even such a simple gesture is so supple and graceful. No, it's right, but there's something weird about you. It doesn't look right, so don't eat it. What's that? What do you mean it doesn't suit me? It's all about image. Fast food is for people with small mouths like you. As long as you stay quiet and chew on your fries, you're fine. So take mine. I place my fries on Arkwaite's tray. What can I say? I don't know what I was doing. I don't want it. I've decided to eat a meal, but I don't feel like I'm eating anything if it's all soft. Arquaid pursed her lips and took a bite out of her hamburger. This time, she was very exaggerated in her gestures, as if she was worried about my eyes. The enigmatic beauty of earlier had faded a bit, and the scene was just barely tolerable. Shucks. What is it with vampires eating burgers? Well, it's probably because they're not used to eating burgers or food. They just drink blood. No living thing can survive without eating and getting enough nutrition for its activities. Earlier, I said that Arquay does not suck blood. Then her source of sustenance will be the same as ours, a human diet? Hey, Arquay. What a tease. No, I'm not going to complain anymore. I've got something I need to ask you, okay? Okay, but what? You know, you're a vampire, right? So I was wondering if blood is the only thing you can call food. Arquaid looks at me with wide eyes. I knew this was an ill-advised question. Here. You see, even Arquaid's expression got a lot more intense. You know, Shiki, basically, I don't eat. Sure, I can move on my own if I just say the nutrients like this, but it's all about my mood. 
The way I replenish my heat is different from that of Shiki and the others. It is true that I have an appetite, but I think it's the same as the human sexual desire. Uh, where are we going with this? I get frustrated when I don't eat, but I don't put a lot of emphasis on food, so I don't get the urge to flip. Easily, Arquay denied the blood meal theory. She really doesn't need to drink blood, apparently. Oh, yeah. Thank goodness Arquaid wasn't like the other vampires who kill people for a meal. And Arquaid, too. I'm a vampire who doesn't need to suck blood. If you had said that from the beginning, I, I would have cooperated with you honestly. Wait a minute. You don't call that a vampire, do you? I'll tell you what, I'm sure you can't stand it if all you eat is tasteless food. Sometimes I want to eat something that has more toxins than nutrients. Take this hamburger, for example. Shiki, why did you choose this store? For simple heat replenishment? Or because I really wanted to eat this mass-produced product of poorly processed meat, cheap bread, and, and chemical seasoning cooked without much ingenuity or skill. Ugh, I'm ashamed to say that I wanted to eat those junk burgers. Yeah, that's fine. There's nothing to be embarrassed about, okay? There are things that look good to me even though I know they are poisonous. That's what human blood is to me. Humans and I are no different in our desire to take things we don't need to take. See, intelligence is a creature that skips breeding, eating, etc. unless some secondary benefit is added to it, right? Eat from good food. Eat something because it tastes good. We breed because it feels good. I guess you humans are the ultimate in that. You know that connecting to pleasure, wherever it is, is a stronger way to thrive. You are the rare example in the universe where a relatively weak life form has shown the strongest survival potential. Arquid speaks as if singing. I didn't sense any contempt for us humans there. Rather, I could even feel the motherly nature of watching my child grow. But... No, what about that? It's like being told that humans can't live without entertainment, and it's hard to accept that as a human being. It's okay, it's okay. That's why you are the most advanced animals on this planet. And life that tries to find meaning in survival is a terrible evolution from the planet. That's exactly what I didn't think of. Anyway. In the case of the true ancestor, the blood-sucking species, in my case, blood is the top-quality food that satisfies such a metaphysical secondary benefit. So if the only purpose is to be active, there is no need to take human blood at all. So, for a vampire known as true ancestor, the best thing to satisfy his mental hunger is blood. But you said Arque doesn't like blood-sucking. Oh, so just like humans have their likes and dislikes in food, Arquay doesn't like the taste of blood. I utter a flash of inspiration. Arquay, however, furrowed her brow painfully. I don't know. I don't know what blood tastes like. You don't know the taste of blood? I told you I'm only half a vampire. I don't know what blood tastes like. I don't know what it's like yet. All I know is that when you suck blood, you don't recognize them as a person. Arquaid muttered, averting her gaze from me. Hey Shiki, what if, if a bird or a fish had the same intelligence and lifespan as you, would you be able to eat it? No matter how intelligent you are, food is still food. So can you eat it? No, it's... Can we eat it? I don't know. I don't know. But if there are other animals that don't have intelligence, I would eat them first. That's what I'm talking about. See, that's the thing. It's the reason why I hate blood. Well, maybe Shiki is right and you have your likes and dislikes. I'm not sure what to do, but I'm sure it's a good idea. But, well, if I didn't have human intelligence and values, I might have sucked blood without hesitation. It's the natural order of things in nature to take away other life in order to survive. I couldn't help but move my body out of surprise. 
killing to live is not a sin. Even if it was natural for a vampire, if Arquaid told me that, I would have to rebel. I'm here to kill vampires who think like that. I'm not here to admit that Arquaid is in the same boat as them. It's the natural order of things to eat other living things to survive. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's also a rule of nature that it's forbidden to eat the same species. It's... so please don't use that kind of metaphor. I don't really like to talk about that. I don't really like to talk about what ifs. Really? I like what ifs. I don't know what the outcome will be, but for now, at that moment, you feel like there's salvation in there somewhere, don't you? If, huh? So if this girl wasn't a vampire, I wouldn't have to feel this way. Or if she had been a blood-sucking monster like the other vampires, I wouldn't have been so irritated. What's wrong, Shiki? You suddenly look so gloomy. Oh, maybe the bathroom? You know what? I'm sure you're not the only one who has a serious problem with this. I sigh. Ugh. But well, the ease of it saved me. No matter how serious I was about it, it didn't seem to matter to Arquaid whether it sucked blood or not. Yeah, I know. It was none of my business. I've been mumbling to myself since a while ago. It's not fair to hide things, Shiki. Mmm, Arquaid purred again, like a cat. I'm not hiding anything from you. You're the one who's always hiding things from me in the first place. You're always amusing me with stories I don't understand. You're just trying to be funny, which I am. You're amused. Yes, I am. But you're really amused that I'm holding my head in my hands. I'm not a prankster. I'm a sensitive person. Well, I'm a different creature than you anyway, so I don't really care. No, it's not... I've told Shiki everything I know about you. It seems like you have a lot to hide. It's just that Shiki doesn't ask you much. That hit me where it hurts. Indeed, I had consciously avoided asking questions of Arquaid. The fear that as a human being, I shouldn't venture any further into the world of vampires. As Tono Shiki, he had the self-control to know that he could still go back now. But now that I've come this far, there's something I need to know. The time to stay on the safe side of the border must have ended last night. Okay, just ask and they'll tell you anything. Yes, we're a team that works together. Then, as you wish, let's pursue the question. The main topic that Arquaid has been deliberately avoiding talking about. The identity of the enemy we're after. You should ask her here what he's like. Then I have a question. Arquaid, what kind of vampire is your enemy after all? Since you've followed them this far, you must know them by now, right? It's... it's... What? You just told me you don't keep secrets from me. I know, but please don't get mad at me. It was only recently that I found out that vampires were lurking in this city, and I haven't even met the main body yet. We don't even know what the enemy looks like this time, male or female, child or adult. So, what are the other features? See, Vlav's super extractive power, right? Don't you have any features like that? We can't be sure of that until we see it. The enemy I'm chasing isn't that powerful, but I can't predict what they'll be good at this time, or what kind of people they'll become. Yes, that's the thing about him. He's so broad. All I know is that there is a hint of him in the city. Arquaid is not lying. I'm not saying it, but I still feel like she's hiding the core of the problem. For example, so... We don't know what they look like because we haven't found them yet. Yeah, that's fine. It's a given. But you at least know his name, don't you? Name. Front. Yes, a name. Arquaid turned over and fell silent. 
Apparently, for some reason, she can't give me his name and she's in trouble. Yes, I thought. That's... that's his name. I was horrified. A chill strikes my neck, as if everything in this restaurant has been frozen with just one breath from her. His name is Shiki. Uh, what? Arquade was not hiding anything. His name is Mikhail Roa Valdemjong. He's a human turned vampire, one of those ubiquitous mortals. Her beautiful lips move as she looks down. The only thing there was a blood curdling hatred. Arquade, you. Arquade's shoulders were shaking. I'm trying to keep my emotions from raging out of control. I'm sorry for asking such a boring question. It's enough that the name is known. Now all we have to do is find it in person and see for ourselves. Arquaid shakes her head faintly. As if to say, you can't forget. I don't know if that was a mistranslation when she said Shiki, because, like, I'm thinking, well, that's what he was in the far side routes, but not in the near side from what I remember, that he was, like, reincarnated as as Akiha's real brother. Some time passed in silence. I'm sorry, Shiki. When I mention his name, I can't seem to keep my cool. Arquay turns over and apologizes to me. The sullen appearance is not what it seems. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry for you, but I'm rather relieved that you're human. Oh, really? What's so human about it? Yeah, you went after him because you hated him, and you only said enemy because you were afraid you would get emotional. That makes more sense to me than killing a vampire emotionlessly and in a perfunctory manner. If you have a good reason, I'd rather... I was about to say I was tempted to lend a hand, but I covered my mouth. Because those were the words that made the reason for protecting the city different. Anyway, I'm done asking questions. Let's eat while it's still warm. This kind of food becomes deadly tasteless when it gets cold. Yeah. But I don't think this tastes good to begin with, do you? Shiki's taste buds are a little weird, aren't they? The princess averts her gaze as if to say, it's vulgar. Just happened to be on the wrong side of the menu today. It's also a good time to eat a burger. After finishing our meal and hitting the main street, we were on our way to school. The sun would soon be setting at this time. What did you think, Arquaid? I want to go to the school where you go to. The reason for this was because her evil smile pushed me over the edge. Just before 5 p.m. Thanks to the ban on club activities and the early dismissal from school, there was nobody at the main gate. I could probably count on one hand the number of people left. As long as we don't do anything conspicuous, we can lead them to the courtyard. I'm telling you, you can't go inside this building. I cheated today and Arquaid is an outsider. I know what you mean. I won't bother Shiki, so don't worry. And I mean, hey, if somebody asks questions, she can just use her, use her uh, mystic eyes to persuade them to go away. Arquaid glanced at the school gate to see what was going on inside. A beautiful blonde hanging around at the main gate is more eye-catching. Arquaid, this way. Let's just go into the courtyard. I pulled away and hurried on. The courtyard was quiet. Oh, by the way, Arquaid came to our school. I thought my heart was going to jump out of my chest at the time, but looking back at it like this, my mouth is grinning. 
For a vampire, going out in the daytime and strolling around the school is really insane. Yeah, you noticed that, Shiki. What? You're aware of what? The school. As far as I can see, there's no one here. What? When I was told, I looked around the school building from the courtyard. There were no lights in the classrooms or even in the staff rooms, which was supposed to be filled with teachers. Arcoid was right, it's really uninhabited. The main gate was open, but you passed the last staff member as you entered the courtyard. Hey, hey, there's no one inside, okay? Arcoid stares up at me. Somehow, I, I understood what Arcoid was trying to say. I don't want to. Arcoid didn't hear a word of it, even though I assured her categorically. Hmm, we've come at a good time, haven't we? I told you, I don't want to do this anymore. Wow, it's a lot bigger inside than I thought. The hallway's wide enough for this to work. I wonder. Arcoid's voice comes not from nearby, but from the window of the school building. Shiki! I can't open this door. Can I break it down? And fast travel. No questions asked. <laughs> she has the ability of teleportation. Arcoid is standing in front of the window glass, spinning one hand in a circle. I was dizzy from the obvious appeal of, I'm going to punch it out now. The... Why don't you listen to what people have to say, you bastard? We can't unleash such a destructive demon on our school building. Even if it's impossible to stop, we should at least try. Oh, here it comes! Arcoid smiles, wondering what all the fun is about. You... What's the fun in looking at my high school? There are plenty of other places to play. I'll take you to the right one. We'll go somewhere else. Not really, is it? It seems that the place that Shiki goes to is reasonably fun. Shiki, I want to go inside the school building. Can you kill the key to the entrance there? You're not going to kill me, are you? Isn't Shiki's cut cleaner than mine? Your cut has a surface that no blade can cut. Even if someone finds it later, they'll never be able to figure it out. Look, look, she said, pointing to a window in the hallway. You're so weird and childish. I shifted my glasses halfway. And for a window glass that has a line visible in the crescent lock. Damn, it's so convenient. I pull a knife out of my pocket and slice off the key with a snap. No, you're right about killing off instead of cutting it. Okay, let's go inside from here. I opened the window pane and walked into the school building with my feet on the ground. Ugh. <sighs> Well, it was predictable, or rather, it was a promise. The first place Arcoid wanted to go was my classroom on the third floor. What are you learning here, Shiki? What? It's what most students learn. A study of history and a deep knowledge of one's own culture. I'm also learning physics and mathematics to deepen my understanding of the way things are. Oh, and I'm also learning English in case I have to travel to other countries. That's right. I thought you were learning how to dissect a human body efficiently or how to handle a blade. Arcoid makes a rather amusing comment in a nonchalant manner. Arcoid, you've known what this place is all along. <laughs> oh yeah. She really just clapped. She even clapped her hands together. It's always hard to know what this girl is thinking, but this time it stands out. What the hell was she thinking, coming to a school that had nothing to do with killing vampires? Shiki? What's with the serious look on your face all of a sudden? Is there a reason why you brought me here after all? No, there's no good reason for me to be here. I just want to hear about what happened here. What do you mean here at the school? Yes, Shiki spends half of his day here, doesn't he? 
Do you ever use all the knowledge and experience you've gained so far? Aren't you wasting your time learning things you don't need in life? Huh? Arkwaite's question is the most difficult to grasp the intent of so far. You know, some of the knowledge and skills you learn here may never be used in your life. Isn't that kind of a waste? Well, a lot of it could certainly go to waste. I'm learning math, but if I'm not going to be a professional, I'm not going to be able to use it that much. The only thing you'll use in life is arithmetic. Arkwaite is right. Most of the time I spend here is superfluous to my life. Oh, come on. Then, why are you wasting your time doing that? Your time is short. You shouldn't have time for this. I don't have time. Because I don't have a clear purpose right now. Until then, I'm living life in vain like this. I can't believe it. I can't believe you're making it your daily fetters even though you know it's useless. Yeah, I can't believe it. Arquade's voice was severely depressed. I still don't know why that is. However, I can only answer her monologue. Daily fetters, you say? It may be true. I don't know. I don't know if waste is such a bad thing. Huh? What's the point of all this extra effort? It's okay. It's extra. Even if what you learn here is only used here, it will be a reminder of your days. Someday, when I'm old and in a daze, I'll be able to do that. If it's an event that you remember with a wry smile, then it's meaningful. How can you enjoy remembering something when the memory itself is useless, Shiki? Oh, that part's okay. People are made to be unable to remember things that are inconvenient for them. Life is full of useless things, and when you get right down to it, living itself is a waste. On the contrary, we may be alive to do useless things. So I don't take it too seriously. I think the natural way to live is to fake it so that we don't realize that everything is meaningless. You have to admit that it's useless and then do it. I can't do anything for nothing. I've never done anything but what I had to do. What are you talking about? If that's the case, then the whole day has been a waste. Arquid's goal is to find the vampire, right? Then you wouldn't have to walk the streets with me. I know. That's what I don't understand either. I tried asking questions to Shiki, who seemed to be wasting his time, but it made me even more confused. Yes, yes, I'm sorry, but I'm nothing but a waste of time anyway, and I can't even prove to myself why I should stay. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, but I know what you mean. The human species has a whole set of value standards, not just individual ones. So the mistakes of the individual can be forgiven if the whole is right. You can thrive to produce only one answer at the end, the moment when the species comes to an end. But because we are individuals, we can never forgive ourselves for our mistakes. Never let the will of anyone other than yourself be reflected in you. That's why I've always thought that I shouldn't do anything unnecessary. Quietly. Arquid spun her words as if she were repenting. But I don't know what's going on anymore. It's only a little, only seven days. I wondered if I was right. I'm so happy. I never thought that I'd be happy just to be alive, just to be doing this. I wonder if I'm broken. I've never stayed awake this long in my life. I wonder if the truth is that I've long since fallen asleep and I'm just seeing selfish dreams. I can't talk to her. That's what I don't get. I don't know what Arquaid is suffering from, not even a shred. The only thing that I felt was annoyance that I didn't want to see that face. What's broken, though? You look normal to me. You may look like that on the outside, but you're not. The extra emotions, such as fun or painful, are so much bigger now. If you can't ignore what you used to be able to ignore, that means it's broken, right? 
And besides, I'm not normal. I'm not like Shiki. I'm a vampire. Forlornly, Arkwade seemed to laugh. <laughs> Ephemeral, hidden in the red of the sunset. Ugh. That's not right. This is weird. Classroom at sunset. A woman slouches unreliably in the red sun. I can't believe that something like that is right in front of me. It's not like that. Yeah, it's not like that. You're a vampire, so don't show your unreliable side like a normal girl. Don't worry if you can't ignore it or if you're wasting your time. Just let it go. You can't take yourself too seriously. I don't know what you're confused about, but you're fine the way you are. Because I'm not bothering anyone. I don't know. I get yelled at a lot by Shiki. Is that different? Stupid. I'm the exception. I'm guilty of killing you, so I deserve to be dragged around by you. So it's okay. I'm not doing this for the love of it. So don't even think about the trouble you'll cause me. Arquid's gaze remained dark. It's really, really annoying when people give me that look. I feel weak. I'm afraid I'm going to have to hold on to her. For God's sake, be more shambolic, Arquid. You're selfish, you're free, and you're a handful, but, but other than that, you're decent, you're not broken, you're just like any other girl. So please smile like you always do. You make me feel bad when you look at me like that. That's a terrible thing to say. Am I being so selfish? Arquade muttered to herself as she was looking at me. Oh no, I'm a little distracted. Didn't you realize that you were being selfish until now, princess? What the hell are you talking about? If you take the word selfish out of Arquade, you're left with nothing but bones. Bones! I was trying to be lighthearted and make fun of her, but I ended up laughing out loud. Because I never dreamed that Arquid would be so shy to ask me about myself. <laughs> oh. Damn you, Shiki! What a heartless bastard when people are seriously asking for advice. That's right. I told you that I'm kind to everyone but you. It's not the first time I've been heartless, you know. Isn't it? He chuckles in agreement and looks back at Arquid. <laughs> no complaints. The shade that was there before is nowhere to be seen, and she has a pure face like this one. Yeah, it's better for you to be healthy. I'm kind of relieved too. What? W why is Shiki relieved? You're heartless to me, aren't you? No, well, that's what I'm talking about. No matter how much you are pushed around, no matter how much trouble you bring, it's okay, I guess. I just don't want to see her get depressed. Wait, it's not good to think about it anymore. I know she's beautiful and I know she's a good girl. And I know I'll never be bored with her. But that's it. Don't have any more feelings than that. Pull yourself together, no matter how adorable I find her. You're so unclear. Don't you even know what you're getting yourself into? I don't want to be told that by a vampire who was whimpering just now. It's okay. I don't know who I am. I'm aware that I'm crazy. My memory is always fuzzy, and I'm always anemic. Basically, I can't even take care of myself. I see. That's why Shiki is always in a daze. Arquaid nodded as if she was truly convinced. If I can believe a makeshift excuse that much, I wonder if it's really true before I get angry. Well, Akiha also complains that I'm always in a daze, and in fact, from the outside looking in, I'm probably unreliable. Well, I can't stay in the classroom forever. Let's go outside for good. It's just that there is no one here right now, and there's a chance that the teacher on duty will be back. Come on, we've got to get out of here. You don't have any more business to attend to, do you? Yeah, I don't have anything to do. 
Shiki? Shiki? Hmm? I throw a glance at her. Arkwait swallowed slightly and then asked something funny. Do you ever have fun, Shiki? Do you have a fever today, princess? Don't be silly. I know a little bit about your body. You know that too, don't you? I just know that my body could die at any moment. I bit my back teeth at the sudden but serious question. I'm not sure what to do. I felt an old wound in my chest wriggling. Well, that's right. We all die someday. Though in your case, it's probably faster than others. Arquade's eyes are serious. But we all have a death line. There are many areas where we can die easily. I'm not the only one with such a mortal body. I don't know why. Sometimes when I look at you, I get scared for no reason. So let me ask you. With such a precarious life, is there ever a time to have fun, Shiki? Do you ever have fun, you ask? Oh, this girl is really... You're such an idiot, you know that? How am I supposed to know that? My life. A sense of justice that is exemplary. Morality that is socially acceptable. Humanity that respects harmony. All of those things that were given to me by my teachers, and I did them for survival because they were so useful and versatile. I'm fundamentally a misanthrope. From the beginning, I'm not sure about that kind of ambiguity. But there are some things you can be aware of. I almost died seven years ago, and I think I was in a dark place for a little while, probably while I was being treated in the hospital operating room. I guess you could say it's a dream. At that moment, I realized I was dead, and that dark place was death. After that, I felt bottomless gratitude that I had miraculously survived, met my teacher, and was able to return to my normal life. It's something I didn't realize until I died once. The world was such a peaceful place, such a beautiful thing. Even if my eyes deny everything I think about it. I don't know that living here is any fun at all. I'm sure I'll never think about it. As long as I have these two eyes, I cannot allow myself to think of death as easy. But, still, life is beautiful. A lot of people say they can't find anything fun to do. I used to know that people were happy just to be alive. I know it's a long time ago, but I'm sure that before the accident, I was shining every day. That's why I'm still alive, even though I've been shown that everything is useless. I'm inhuman now. It is difficult to believe that decent values and decent morals are sincere. Tono Shiki's impression of fun was lost a long time ago. If you ask me if I'm having a good time, I'd say I'm having a good time, unless it's something I really can't forgive. No matter what the despair, being is enough. I don't need anyone to tell me what to do. Just by being able to do this, human beings truly have a meaning in life. I just think it's fun just to be alive. I've had a lot of fun so far, so I'm motivated to keep going. I'm sure you must be right. Well, here's my answer to your question. I replied, but I was a little embarrassed. After all this, this is the opinion of a man who has lived only 17 years. There is no way this is the right answer. And yet, the woman in front of me. I see. That's the spirit of Shiki. Fun to do so, huh? Yes, I know it's superfluous, but if it's fun, I can't cut it out. I was afraid of that, so I asked a trivial question, but I guess that's the answer now. With the best smile I've ever seen, she acknowledged my immature mind. What the hell, are you still reeling from what you said earlier? Yes, but for now, the rut is gone. That's why I won't hesitate until I defeat the vampires that are nesting in this city. Until then, I'll fight alongside Shiki. Nodding, Arquaid smiled. 
until we defeat the vampires, huh? That's what I thought. I don't remember you and I having that kind of relationship. Because this day has been so normal. I had absentmindedly forgotten such an obvious basic premise. Hey, Arkwaid. When you're done with all that, you can go and finish killing the vampires. Would you like to play like this just one more time before we part ways? What? What does that mean? I said when Arkwaid's purpose is done, let's do this one more time for nothing. After all, you and I are only together because we are cooperating with each other. So really, I was just wondering what it would be like to see you for no reason at all after we have no more obligations. That's not what I meant. We were just friends who liked each other casually, without thinking about vampires. I just felt that Arkwaid would be happy if I made her a natural memory. Well, if you're busy, I don't mind. The mind is the exact opposite of the heart. Arkwaid's eyes widened in dismay, then. Yeah. When all is said and done, let's come back here again, Shiki. It doesn't make any sense, but I'm sure it will be a lot of fun. With a radiant smile and a bouncy gesture, she promised that she would intend to do so. Classroom at Sunset in the midst of the colors that seemed to be separated from time, the image remained in my memory as the most certain thing in the world. In the end, I gave her a tour of the broadcast room and the art room, and by the time I left the school, the sun had set. It was just after 7.30 in the evening. It's a little early, but let's start looking for vampires. Yeah. It's about that time. It's about that time of night. Time to go vampire hunting. It's a little early, but let's start looking for vampires. Are you leaving? Isn't it still light in town? The sooner the better. We've had enough fun during the day. We should at least get some work done at night. Shiki is so serious. If you're so serious, why did you break your promise yesterday? I had no choice. My body didn't work yesterday. I was going to go to the park right before. Well, now that I think about it, it was reckless. I mean, it was kind of reckless to just, uh, <laughs> to, if, if you were going to go meet Arquaid regardless of your, of your body being in that condition. If Akiha hadn't stopped me, I would have met up with Arquaid in that condition and dragged my feet at the last moment. Hmm, I see. Then let's do it. What's with that face? I have a bad feeling about this, but what the heck, I'll do it. So, Shiki was going to the park, right? There's still time. If you couldn't do it yesterday, you can do it again now. Arkway took off at a light trot. It looked like she was seriously heading for the park. Hey, wait, hey! Not wanting to lose sight of Arkway, we started running as fast as we could. So I'm wondering if this is going to be an evening where we're hunting vampires or a more romantic evening now. <laughs> See, you're always following me, aren't you, Shiki? Yeah, the first time he followed you, he killed you. <laughs> Idiot, because I don't know what I'll do if I leave you alone. <laughs> Breathe through your shoulders and regulate your disordered breathing. I'm really being pushed around by this girl today, having to run so far through the crowd. But I guess there are a lot of people at this time of day. There are signs of people here and there. It's a little unsettling. But because it's... Why don't you listen to me, you idiot? Really? I think I'm listening to your voice, though. I see. If, if you can hear me and you're ignoring me, that's even worse. I'm not ignoring you. Whenever I respond to Shiki's small talk, he always calls me an idiot, so I just keep quiet. I see. That could be a problem for us, too. Ha ha. 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 
Uh. From the front of the school to the park, it's roughly 1.5 kilometers. Even though it was a short run, my heart didn't calm down easily after such a long distance. It's not that Arcwade ran fast. If anything, I, th I think I was late for Arcwade. Maybe it was the after effects of yesterday's anemia, or maybe my body just wasn't feeling up to par. Are you okay, Shiki? Why don't you take it easy and rest on the bench? I will. Once my body settles down, I'll be on my way to the city, Arcwave. It's too early. I'm glad that Shiki's motivated, but it's too early. As was the case with Flob, vampires don't operate blindly unless it's on their own time. They won't be active until later at night, so we'll have to kill some time. I wish you had said something like that earlier. Yeah, he was getting all fired up for nothing. I sat on the bench and looked at the clock with nothing to do. Well, I mean, Arcway can always pull out her, uh, her whiteboard <laughs> and tell us more about vampires that we don't know. The clock in the park read just after 9 o'clock. The number of people was decreasing and the night was getting darker by the minute. For some reason, Arcway did not sit down on the bench, but instead walked around the area looking bored. This time is flying by. A quiet night. A luminous moonlight shines down on the park and Arcway at night. Moonlight, or... I thought back two nights ago when I was attacked in front of the Tono residence. If it had been this bright back then, I might have been able to see those black shadows clearly. Ah! I stood up from the bench with a gulp. Shiki, what's wrong? Have you found a dead person? No, it's not that. It's just that I forgot something. I was too brazen for my own good. I can't believe I was attacked on my way home and didn't think about it until now. Arcwade, I was attacked by some weird guy two nights ago. What kind of weirdos? What kind of guy is a weirdo? Um, that's... Calm yourself down and explain to Arcwade, as clearly as you can, what happened two nights ago. Well, I, I mean, I saw a, uh, I found out that my teacher was a vampire hunter, and, you know, and, and a nun in her spare time. <laughs> That's what happened. I gave a brief explanation and looked at Arcwade's face. Arcwade's eyes remained sharp and did not soften since the conversation began. That black dead guy and Noel Sensei, they're called surrogates, aren't they? Is he an enemy of yours? Yes, they are both my enemies. I don't know who this black dead person is, but I have an idea of what she is, a woman in a nun's uniform. Arquade narrowed her eyes grimly. No, she seemed more irritated than grumpy, as if she was nervous. That woman who saved Shiki is certainly a proxy, isn't she? In case you're wondering, was she alone? Oh, yeah. I was alone, Noel Sensei, but... Oh, did I mention that the agents work in pairs? Yeah, he's either on his own or has a reason for not moving. If the other one is that woman, she's an eyesore. It's hard to know when she's referring to Noel or when she's referring to the shadowy figure because, of course, uh, in the translation, the genders are kind of wrong. Uh -huh. So it's kind of hard to know what she's really talking about at times. I'm sure she'll find the coffin before I do. Shall we destroy that one first? Arcwade's frustration was no longer at an all-time high. I'm not sure why, but apparently she doesn't like Noelle's partner. Arcwade and that woman must be incompatible. I understand that Noelle Sensei is an enemy to Arcwade. That's what she told me. But we're all here for the same reason, so why can't we work together? Well, you know, I may be able to lend a hand in some cases. But this time, it's absolutely impossible. I won't give it up to a human, and if that agent was that woman, I'd take care of her first. Wow. Apparently they don't have a very good relationship. <laughs> it's not peaceful at all. 
I think we'd better drop the idea of working with Noel Sensei. Okay, you're not cooperating with that side, are you? If you say so, I won't say any more. I won't ask why. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Are you being kind to me, Shiki? I'm sure you'll be able to understand why. I know you don't like it. But your relationship with Noel Sensei and Noel's background are two different things. For God's sake, tell me what that agent is. Yes, I didn't tell you because it's extra knowledge, but now that it's happened, I will. As I've explained before, the Lord of the Castle type of vampire tries to hide his existence. Even if they cause casualties, they will use various sorceries to make sure that the people around them don't notice that they are abnormal. Do you know why I'm doing this? To keep the enemy at bay, right? If you're too flashy, they'll come, the vampire exterminators. Well, human society also has a police force, but vampires do not see that as a threat. Yeah, as is uh, clear by the police trying to shoot at Vlav when he attacked the city, and that pretty much did nothing. I was reminded of this during the battle with Vlav. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> The only thing a vampire fears is the same monster as a vampire. Yes, vampires have a natural enemy. And now the balance of power is in favor of the natural enemy, a group of assassins. The reason vampires exploit humans in secret is for self-preservation. They actually hide their corpses, not because of social mores, but because they don't want their natural enemies to sniff them out. That's what people like Noel Sincer are for. The vampire's natural enemy is another monstrous one. As a normal person, I don't want any more unorthodox things to come into my life. What are you talking about? It's true that the agents are not human, but they're still human. The vampires are the natural enemies of the dead. Because you humans are the natural enemies of the dead. We're the natural enemy? When they are helplessly killed for food? It was a long time ago, when the Western calendar had just begun. Humans created an organizational system based on various magic, mysticism, and ceremonial rituals, and began to eliminate non-human primates. The best example of this is the Cathedral Church, a major religion in Europe that claims to be universal. They've been warding off non-humans for a long time now, and their hostility towards vampires is outrageous. If you look at any religion in the world, there is no religion that is more hostile to vampires than the church. That thing is already possessed. It's too morbid. Even I don't want to be a part of it if I can help it. Arquate sighs in exasperation. <sighs> but I'm not sure if you've seen this before, but I'm sure you've seen it before. I'm guessing that's another translation error because... <laughs> It says that sometimes, and it's just, it's, it, it really doesn't mean anything. If I didn't, I wouldn't have said if I could. And the people who helped Shiki are those who specialize in heresy hunting. They are called agents because they act on behalf of the Lord's teachings. A never-present hit-or-miss hit exorcist who deals with the contradictions of the church by force rather than law. Exorcist. Exorcism. Priests who exterminate vampires. I don't know what to say. I'm just too fit for words. Well, if you're just acting on my behalf, it's cute. It's a different story when it comes to the agents of the burial agency. They will stop at nothing to capture the dead. If the agent sent had been that one, this city would have been wiped off of the map before Vlav got out of control. They're more indiscriminate than Vlav? Yes, if they are vampires, they have the authority to do whatever they want. It's the same with the city that was targeted by the dead. It doesn't matter if it's still inhabited by humans or if it's already defiled. They will burn it to the ground. The reason why the agent called Noelle didn't do anything until now is probably because she was looking for an opportunity to take care of me and the dead at the same time. For the burial agency, non-human primates are evil on their own. Annoyed, Arquaid began to walk through the park. 
things are getting kind of crowded. Arquid is being targeted by her fellow vampires and by those who see vampires as enemies. It's... She's all alone then, isn't she? I watch Arquid walk around for no reason. Under the moonlight, the figure looked like a lost child with nowhere to go. So now we gotta worry about the church along with the uh, the vampires Arquid's hunting. Which reminds me, where is CL? It's like playing Where's Waldo, like where's CL? Where has anybody seen her? <laughs> the clock was ticking away. Before I knew it, almost Almost two hours had passed since I arrived at the park. Uh, my body has long since calmed down, and the people are gone. It's the time of day when the night dwellers, whether human or vampire, start to move. Arquaid, isn't it about time? Yeah, I think it's about time. While she agrees with me, Arquaid still doesn't seem to be on board. You've been acting weird for a while, Arquaid. Did something happen that you don't feel like doing? Not that I'm saying that. What Shiki told me about the shadowy figure kind of stuck with me. Arquaid is visibly listless. I tried to call out to her, what's bothering you? I've been thinking about it. I was picked up here yesterday. What? This was a complete turnaround. A spinning kaleidoscope, this one. I'm sorry, I just don't get it. That's why! I'm saying that while I was waiting for Shiki here yesterday, I was approached by a man. No, I know what happened. I thought you were supposed to be thinking about the shadowy figure. I did! That's why I remembered. I'm not- I'm really not sure what to make of it. I see. That's good to know. Is it, though? It is true that you are a beautiful woman in appearance only, and a man of decent sensibilities and marvelous daring would at least call on you. <laughs> I'm not sure if that- that's not more like a backhanded compliment. It's like, yeah, at least you're beautiful. I mean, that's the only thing good about you. Like, that's what it sounded like he's trying to say. I knew it. At first, I thought you were my enemy, but Shiki said that just by being here, I stand out. So after a while, I figured out he was just a human being. Just in time, that one, see? I was a little on edge last night because of someone else. Wait a minute. I don't think you're going to, you know, pick up a guy who's, you know... No, I didn't do anything. I just talked to him for a while and let him forget about me. Used her mystic eyes, did she? Well, if I hadn't remembered Shiki's words, I might have done something about it. I don't want to know what you mean by... You might have done something about it. <laughs> well, good for you, Arquaid. You've learned to be sensible. Of course. It's only natural. The only person who can make me angry is Shiki. There's no one else who can kill me or save me. I guess that's supposed to be a good thing. A trusting, vivid voice. The smile was so unexpected that it was ridiculous to even count it. Well, you know, everyone gets pissed off when someone kills them. I managed to turn my gaze away from Arquaid, who was frolicking in the park at night. One month ago. If it weren't for the serial murders in the city, there would still be young couples here at this hour, or students returning from a night out. Now it's just me and Arquaid talking here. The search for vampires and the death ray are both in the corner for a bit now. We blend into the landscape as a natural factor. Oh, hey, look! I look up when someone suddenly calls out to me. What is it? What's up? Yes, here's the clock. Now it's time to go. With a big smile on her face, Arquaid pointed to the clock in the park. I looked over and saw that the clock was indeed striking ten. Appointment time. I'll meet you here at 10 p.m. Just a verbal promise. A passing rendezvous that I failed to keep last night. For some reason, I was at a loss for words. 
Why, I'm struck by such a trivial thing. Why does this girl look so happy about such a trivial thing? Really, I don't know. I walked around the city with this girl for a day. I couldn't really feel if Arquaid was really a vampire at all. Let me ask you something. Stop it, Cheeky. Huh? What? You know, you... Don't be such a bore. Yeah? I'm what? I was wondering if you really are a vampire. What kind of answer are you expecting? Am I really a vampire? Shiki, what are you talking about now? It's not too late. It just occurred to me now. I said, averting my gaze. I'm not sure if Shiki has a soft head or a hard head. I don't mind it, but it's a terrible insult. There is no evidence. But just as importantly, I have no proof that you're a vampire. So... You don't even like the sight of blood. You said you were half-human, but I think a vampire who's never sucked blood is less than half-human. It's not that. You don't want her to be a vampire, do you, Shiki? So... Then Shiki, get up from the bench and come over here. Oh no, I think I know what's about to happen here. Arquaid said in a voice devoid of emotion. I did as I was told and stood up and walked over to Arquaid. Arquaid's gaze met mine. Arquaid and I are about two meters away from each other. So do it. Arquaid exhaled heavily and smiled, a fake smile. That's right, I really thought so too. Is Arquaid Brunstad really a vampire? I mean... Relieved. I spat it out uncontrollably, but I couldn't help but think that this question would hurt Arquaid, or so I thought. Arquaid took it as a joke, which helped. It is, isn't it? Arquaid doesn't look like a vampire by any stretch of the imagination. Let's give it a try. Ma laughing mischievously, Arquaid uttered those words. <laughs> yeah, sure, why don't you try? Let's see if I can really suck blood. If I do, will you reward me with something, Shiki? Huh? Arquaid walked toward me, step by step, with a smile on her face. In a dizzying array. It's a good thing I'm here. The white woman approached with footsteps. The white woman approached me. We both know it's a joke. I know what I was doing, but I couldn't move my body at all. What? Yeah, it's probably because of the mystic eyes. I tried to say I'm sorry, but I couldn't. It wasn't Arquaid's power. I had swallowed the words myself. Arquaid is getting closer. One step, another step. Keep your head down, little by little. I stare at her lush, fleshy lips, unable to move a single finger. Shiki said I'm half a person. A sweet voice that seemed to echo in the back of my head. The sound of footsteps came to a halt nearby. Yeah, really, it's easy to suck blood. I heard such a voice in my ear. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. <laughs> Breathing closer. Fingertips touch. I could feel the weight of Arquaid on my shoulders and all over my body. It was, it was a heartbeat that nearly knocked me unconscious. I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. I desperately suppressed my raging emotions. My left arm shivered, trying to stir my back. I couldn't wait to hug my right arm. I try my best to hold her back. I want it so badly, there's no way I can stand it. Still, I must not seek this woman now. 
because everything is different. Stronger than that time, more intense than then. What I'm looking for is fundamentally different from what I was looking for back then. It's not that I want to kill her. It's a different impulse that's driving you this crazy. Th then you're going to go crazy. I shouldn't have tarnished her courage by doing this. I swallowed my rising emotions and bit down on my back teeth. A conflict that lasted less than a second. In the meantime, there was no change in Arquaid's movements. The chill runs down my spine. It, this was a joke. It should have been a joke to yourself, not to me. And yet, I could still feel her fiery breath on my neck. Ar Auto. I try to call her name, but I shut my mouth. It means that you don't trust her. It's over. Now that this prank was over, Arquaid would say with her usual smile, I'm sorry, but I don't know what to do. Nah, I'm not sucking blood after all, she would say. But the weight it was taking on changes. The soft touch becomes a sharp pain. The white fingers gripping my shoulders were trembling. She's scared. My thoughts are clean, no fear, no nothing, not yet anyway. Only Arquaid was shaking and shaking. Painful breathing. Arquaid's breath is so close, yet it feels so far away. I can't see her face. Only the breath on my neck overlaps the trembling of her body. From weakness to roughness. Arquaid? I couldn't stand it, and I said her name. It's a joke. It's... Arquaid's voice trembled. The fingers on my shoulder were no longer trembling. A voice rang out in pain. I didn't want to move, but my body reflexively backed away to escape her. But Arquaid's claws would not weaken. It bites into me like a vice, refusing to let go of my body as I try to pull away. I'm sorry. That was too much of a prank. I'm sorry to tease you, but I need you to get away from... Shiki? Arquaid's fingers never left me. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. For whom is it forbidden? The reason for sounding the alarm. My fingers move to push Arquaid's body away. But it's too late. Everything is slow. When did it start? Now? Was it just five minutes ago? Or was it a day ago? Or, or was it the first time we met? <sighs> a turbulent breath rises from my neck to my brain. It conveyed her arousal like a rushing brain substance. You're... You're... Your The sound of instinct slipping into my ear. No need for crude arm strength, just that sweet pant. I want to have you. The whole body, the whole spirit is melted. Touch your neck. It takes a crazy breath. Moment. Oh, Jesus, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Symbolism. Oh. My rational mind collapsed. It was a deep-seated fear. It was a providence that could not be resisted. They were creatures that could never understand each other. Eyes swirling like a storm. Teeth spiked like a mountain range. There is no way to communicate with them, and their power flexes like a waterfall. The thing that was about to sink its fangs into my neck was not the woman that Tonoshiki knew, but her bare essence. As a human being who has escaped the natural order, I return to the primordial order. There is nothing I can do. I couldn't even move my fingertips. 
What does it mean to be eaten? So this is what it means to be a predator. In the presence of this life, man is but a droplet to be swallowed. Fire. <laughs> the fangs pierced my neck. All I could think about was fear. <laughs> Holy shit. I scream. A moment when I thought to myself, it's pathetic when I hear my own voice. Maybe it's just my imagination, but I really don't know. I felt as if Arcwade's movements had come to a stop right there. Oh shit! But before I can be sure of that, there was a violent burst of sound in front of me, and Arcwade's body was blown away as if by a gust of wind. Wow, that was scary. I tried to mess with her, but thankfully she didn't fight back. No Elson say. Hi, good evening. But I'm sorry, I don't have time to talk to you slowly. Noel Sensei comes up next to me and looks at Arquaid, who was blown away. Arquaid was safe. She was blown nearly 10 meters away, yet there's not a scratch on her. What? Arquaid was stunned. I can't even think about what to do. There. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, Shiki. If you turn that thing away, you'll be next. I'm sorry, but you'll have to be quiet there. Did she just create a barrier? What the hell was that? A white wall rises up in front of me. Before I knew it, there were three swords stuck in the ground around me. The swords form a triangle with each one as a fulcrum, trapping me inside the triangle with a wall of light. Hmm. Master's Black Keys, the Cathedral. Oh, and please don't touch the wall, okay? You'll turn into a pill you'll turn into a pillar of salt if you touch it. I don't really care if your hands are chlorinated or not. What's more important now is Shiki? Arquaid stands up. After looking at me trapped in the wall, I looked at the woman in nun's clothes next to me. The problem is that it's a monster that can take you by surprise and leave you unscathed. Damn, so my level of iron armor won't get you through. Agent. Arquaid's presence changes. Oh, Jesus Christ. Those eyes. It became a swirling, murderous energy that shot through the woman in the nun's uniform. What are you doing? I... I can't... I can't... I can't do anything about it! Shut up and go do manual labor. It's your job to put your body on the line against monsters. Uh, uh, oh my god. It sounded like she was channeling Han Yu there for a second. <laughs> Please let the Cardinal see me through. As if pushed back, the woman in the nun's uniform leapt towards Arkway, tripping over her own feet. Why is she so clumsy? Like, she, she's so clumsy. Like, I, I, I really feel like she doesn't even know what she's doing half the time. It's as if we're not talking. There was no way he could stop Arkway with a rush like that. Let go of Shiki! In fact, Arquaid ran towards us, waving one hand as if to ward off insects. Oh my god! What the heck is that? Can you stop Arquaid with a limp rush like that? Oh, Jesus Christ. These fight scenes are just really impressive. I can't get over it. Oh, you can do it, can't you? Work hard for your salary. Your food isn't benevolent either. From right beside me, I heard fluent but rough Japanese. I turned to look at him, unable to move. There's... Yep, 
That asshole. <laughs> that was a foreign child I had seen before in front of the Tono residence. What is that? The child's hands were covered with what looked like basketballs. Uh, it's definitely not a basketball. I don't know how to describe that. The five fingers move up and down in waves, making a clattering sound. It's like one of those things people use when they're, like, operating puppets. I don't know what those are called, though. Like, puppet strings. It vaguely reminds me of an old typewriter. Or that. Oh, what are you looking at, kid? This is not unusual. Don't be silly. You don't even know one of the puppets. Hard work is a virtue of the Japanese people. He's talking to me. But is that what marionettes are for? Yeah, marionettes. That's what those those are called. Mariette with marionette on strings. This is a street performance in which a wooden puppet with joints is connected to a string and hung from above, making it appear alive only by the movements of the manipulator's hands. I'm not sure I can last two minutes. I don't know what to do. I guess I'll just have to keep talking from here on out. Hey, back off, Noel. You're gonna get your head twisted off. Is he actually controlling her? It was a big fight. The woman in the nun's uniform retreated as if to flee. An arcway, breathing on her shoulder, turned toward the wall of light, the one I was on. <sighs> Glowing red eyes. Arcway, breathing hard, bent over like a large predator and stepped forward to leap on a single foot to hear. Oh my god, it's awful. You're not much different from those ghouls. But you're still the last true ancestor, princess. The old man of Laurentis will be very disappointed when he sees you. What do you mean? Reason returns to Arcwade's eyes. Perhaps seeing this as an opportunity, the kid beside me stepped forward and confronted the white vampire. It's a pleasure to meet you. I am Mario Jola Vestino, acting consecrator of the East. Don't get me started on the height of the position. I hate to say it, but I'm the old man's second child, adopted for convenience. Yeah, this country's acting commander-in-chief. Yeah, I just got here, though. I don't care if it's your parents' money or not. A position is a position. I can't let them do whatever they want in my territory. I especially don't want to have to deal with the mismanagement of a true ancestor falling into a demon's clutches. The will to fight disappears from Arkwade. No, that's fear, isn't it? You finally realize it. You tried to kill this kid by sucking his blood, you know. I'm not sure what to make of that. No, I'm not trying to kill him. What are you playing at? I'm not talking about killing intent. It's nat It's a natural part of the ecosystem. Where's your awareness that you're a nuisance just by existing? It's not like you didn't understand what this kid was saying when he saw your true nature, right? I can't believe my eyes. The old man said you were a cold-hearted weapon, but you're a complete failure. Well, okay, that eye. You've got that evil eye, and you've pointed it at that kid. I'm not sure what to make of it. I'll ask him how he felt about it. Well, you're a kid too, you know. <laughs> the boy, Mario, finally turns his gaze to me. The sharpness of his gaze took my breath away. Despite his foul mouth, the boy is full of, well, fairness. You're up, Tono. Let her know what you think. I almost got eaten in one bite. I was so scared, I almost choked. I was about to yell at him. That's not true, but stopped myself from speaking. That's a lie. In fact, I was terrified. To cover it up would hurt Arquade more than to lie about it. Arquade averts her gaze painfully. The acting priest is right. Back off, vampire. Did you really think that a monster like you would be allowed to be with humans? Leave it to the power to subdue the humans. It's a vile idea, typical of vampires, but I won't let it happen. 
You should be grateful to us, Shiki. You almost turned me into a vampire. No, no, no. That's not true. It's true I was frightened. It's an indefensible fact. But it's not the only thing. I've never had one. She always respected my choices. I've never left anything to chance. The only reason I was with Arcoid was because I wanted to be, not anyone else. No. What's the matter with you guys? You come out of nowhere and talk like you know everything. Arcoid has never sucked blood. That was just a joke. What are you saying? I've never taken blood before? Do you expect me to believe that crap? It's true that the true ancestors there are excellent. There have been no casualties in the last 800 years, but that's not... Shut up! I don't care about that story. Listen, if you interfere with Arcoid, I won't tolerate it, no matter what you are. I'm with Arcoid because I want to be. I don't need the outside world to tell me what to do. What? No forgiveness, huh? Noelle's voice was filled with a faint emotion. Oh god. A part of what had been directed at Arcoid shifted directly to me. Noelle, her sword dangling in her hand, wavered. Hey, Pixie Noelle! What? Pig? Did you say pig? Which one? Why? I mean, you talk too much. Just because you're the son of a wealthy man doesn't mean you should get carried away. Oh, God. <laughs> she said, she said, pick Shannon! <laughs> wow. This really is giving me Han Yu vibes. Um, yeah, where'd the serious atmosphere go? The woman in the nun's uniform let out a strange cry and jumped around by herself. Maybe it's the same Seiyu. That would be interesting if it was. <laughs> the murderous intent I had earlier disappeared beyond the horizon. Something. I'm starting to understand where Noel Sensei is coming from. I'm really sorry that my brainiacs are messing with you. She's a chicken with a low boiling point. I'll give her a good talking to later, so please give her a break. But well, the idiot got a good word out in her own stupid way. I've never sucked blood before, isn't that right, Arquaid Brunstud? Arquaid? Arquaid did not answer. She just looks down and bites her lip in frustration. It is. It seems to be an implicit acknowledgement of the child's words. And a correction. The warning I put on this kid was not to catch him, but to protect him from the scary monster that's here now. And I put it on him in Loja. This means you don't have to say it, do you? Arquaid's face goes up. I'm sorry, she said. In a slightly audible voice, she, she apologized and... She leapt away from the scene as if fleeing into the darkness of the night. Well, damn. Now we'll probably have to go after her. And I know we're getting near the end because that's kind of what happened in the original. Shiki <laughs> has to end up going after Arquaid, trying to, trying to find her. Bullshit! A voice leaks out. I looked up at the moon and shifted my glasses to see the lines. Fuck you! I kill two swords stuck in the ground with one blow. My thoughts are in complete disarray. Fangs that didn't stop. Screamed myself. The self-serving ramblings of outsiders. Don't deny it. I'm sorry. It's like... It looks like these guys are right, running away with such a pained look on their faces. You're thinking too short. You should have thanked me before you chased me, you little shit. You. The boy, who called himself Mario, did not block the way, but, but stopped me as I was about to run. How can I thank you? If only you hadn't come along, Arcway would be nothing. Oh? Are you serious? 
or are you just joking? Either way, go stick your head in that fountain. You're full of shit and you're lying to me. It's not going to save her, you know. The unexpected words stilled my confused consciousness. Just a coincidence. That was really just a coincidence, but it was an accurate and stern point. Don't tell a lie that can't fool even you. The boy spat out that it was an act that would hurt the other person and most importantly undermine him. I let out a big breath and let my head cool down a bit, eager to go after Arkwaid. Yeah, I'm sorry, but you're right. Thanks for the help, and thanks for helping Arkwaid. I shelved my suspicions about Mario and the others and bowed my head. I've changed my mind. Just listen to me for a minute, Tono. No, you're not. You want to hear what I have to say? Well, they're both the same. Hey, come here. Mario trotted over to the bench. Take a deep breath and follow him. To tell you the truth, I want to go after Arquaid right now. But deep down, I know that this is not enough to solve anything. I have a feeling that the boy definitely knows what I should do from now on. Uh, agency? Do you want me to? I mean, can I sit down and rest? Die, pig. You're the SP behind me. I'm the only one who can sit on the bench. Tono won't let you get away with it, so you'll just stand there. Wow. They've seen through it completely. Like Noel, this boy did not seem to fall into the normal category. Well then, I guess we'll see. How much have you heard about us? You're an expert at killing vampires. Arquid said you're an agent of the Cathedral Church. I see. That's all you need to know. I'm a rookie who was sent here to replace my father. To tell you the truth, I'm only halfway through this country's history. The three men there were investigating before I did. But he did it on his own. If it wasn't for me, you would have been removed as well as your master, pig. You should be grateful. Yes, thank you. I love you, monk. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Mario, I just clicked my tongue with the guy behind me. Our job is to clean vampires. Not the true ancestor, Arquaid. It's a nasty competitor, but I'm not brave enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it. Even though you kind of just did. <laughs> Have you heard about what kind of vampire the princess is after? The tone of Mario's voice changes faintly. It seems that it's not just a question, but I can't read his true intentions right now. I have no choice but to answer honestly here. At least the name Roa. It's a castle lord type vampire and it's been lurking in the city for years now. So that's all the princess said. It's a double whammy, isn't it? I don't know, Tono. And I don't know the true ancestor. That's why you're so lost. Damn, what happened to the true ancestors? It's not even close to accurate. Did a meteorite hit you? No, that... I'm sure it's because I... I couldn't say it was because I killed her. Oh well, there's been reports of another big one. I've been putting it off for a while, but I'll put it up for investigation. Okay. That's it. That's it for confirmation. I'll tell you why I stopped you, and I'll tell you about the enemy you're trying to kill. Wait! Acting priest! That's not it! Behind me, Noel Sensei was fidgeting. Obviously, it was something he shouldn't talk about. Most importantly, it's information I can get down my throat. I still don't know anything about what kind of vampire Arkwade's enemy is. That would be a great help to me. Are you sure you want to talk about this? Not good. It's confidential. But well, Tono is party to this, right? I believe in treating atheists well, let alone infidels. They'll be an important source of funding sooner or later. Yes, that statement is doctrinal. Warning, Keikaku! Shut up. I'll mosaic the important parts. 
Well then, let's give a lecture to the princess's rare collaborator. Hey Tono, you said the enemy was an older type of vampire. So you've heard that they're imperfect immortals, right? I did. The dead need to suck human blood to keep their bodies alive. But on the other hand, as long as they're sucking human blood, they can live forever without aging, right? Yes, but that's not really immortality, is it? Immortality is an image of perfection, right? A creature that can't live without human blood and whose body collapses if it doesn't drink blood is far from perfect. In fact, it's probably less than human. It's... It's sophomoric, but it's not wrong. It is true that vampires are more than human, but they can't live without sucking blood. How are they any different from any other creature? Yeah, sure. If you die from any external cause, you can't call it immortality, can you? Hey Tono, you're talking fast. You want to sit next to me? I'm fine. But what does that matter? For all their faults, vampires are still immortal as long as they have human blood. The definition of immortality is what you're talking about Arquaid's enemies. Yeah, it's a bit of a detour though. Just be patient a little longer. Anyway, the immortality of vampires, which is distinguished from the dead, is unstable. In their case, it simply means that their lifespan is several times longer than that of humans. Simply put, they're not only inhuman in terms of lifespan, but also in terms of strength. Oh, there it is. The unique abilities of the dead are just different abilities that they acquired when they were human and grew for hundreds of years. They've learned what they've learned, and they've learned it as vampires, and it's just become a principle. How does that work? The proposition of the dead, the purpose of life, a curse that cannot die. The only path to true immortality. This is what they call the principal blood commandment, idea blood. Think of it as your summer vacation homework that you'll never finish. What kind of analogy is that? <laughs> Because of this principle, each of the dead serves a completely different purpose. The truths they learned are different for each one of them. And, among these mortals, there was an asshole who was seriously studying immortality. You mean you became immortal and now you're studying immortality? Oh, when the dead become vampires, they realize that this is the pinnacle of immortality in human form. But, you know, he felt that it was more of a degeneration. I don't want this imperfection. I'm going to create a more perfect immortality. But as long as there is a form, destruction is inevitable. There are no exceptions to the pressures of time, the wear and tear of cells, and the fading of the soul in any being. When life is born, it contains death. As long as I am here, even if I have a body that does not age, I cannot escape the death of existence. So pretty much, pretty much like Zoken Mato from Fate. To escape death is to die. This absolute contradiction is a problem we just can't solve. Yes, death is in everyone's life. If there's anyone who doesn't, it's... It's the one where death doesn't exist from the beginning. Even Arquaid has death in the daytime. There is no one in this world who doesn't really die. Uh, there is no escaping the death of existence. So instead of a way to prolong life, he looked for a way to continue to exist after death. That's what he saw as immortality. It's not in our doctrine, but it's called reincarnation. If you can die now and start over as a new person, with your current self preserved, then you have ushered in death. Well, it's not really death if it hasn't disappeared yet. It would be an overstatement to say that we are going beyond death. Reincarnation means, that is, when you're done with your current body, you start over again from the fetus. Yes, while he is still alive, he decides in advance which body will be his next body. And when the baby is born, he implants all the information about himself. His information will remain hidden until the baby reaches adulthood or self-intelligence. And when the baby has developed the intelligence to take over for him or her, he or she will become a vampire. Wait a minute. What is that? Don't tell me you're going to operate on the baby while it's still inside the mother. 
No, it's not a medical procedure. The moment the current body is destroyed, it will be reincarnated into a predetermined body. It's a copy. I said all information earlier, but in other words, it's like radio waves. In this case, it is the human brain that transmits and receives the radio waves. What's great about that guy is that he was able to process a thing like a soul, which is unmeasurable and would have faded away without the vessel of the body, into something that can be transmitted. Let's put aside whether such a thing is really possible. By that logic, he was born a human being. You grow up as a human and then one day you become a completely different person, a vampire. It's... Mario. I mean, that's the guy. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The vampires that we, the Cathedral Church, and the True Ancestor Princess are chasing. His former name was Michael Roa Valdemjong. Now he is immortal, also known as the Serpent of Akasha or the Reincarnated Infinite. The snake is a symbol of infinity and circulation. It sheds its skin and takes on a new body. That is the enemy of Arquaid. Vampires to be reincarnated. The sound of it was chilling, but I finally understood the identity of the enemy that Arquaid had never mentioned before. It's funny because I think in the Arquaid route it was Ciel that explained this to us. It seems that Ciel was just completely removed from the Arquaid route. But here's the thing. The princess was originally a device used to kill vampires, but after Roa showed up, she started chasing him relentlessly. Roa has been reincarnated 16 times so far. The true ancestors have annihilated all of them. I'm not sure what the point is, but I'm sure it's worth it. You said you're making them disappear, but even if that thing dies, it will be born again, right? Then what's the point of defeating it? Yes, Roa was killed by the True Ancestor, and each time he was reincarnated, he was killed by the True Ancestor again. He's been doing that for a long time now. That's 800 years. If the princess had the power to annihilate not just the body, but the meaning of the body, she wouldn't have let that bastard get away with it. Mario says hatefully, I wonder if it's just my imagination, but he himself seems to have some thoughts about Roa. Is this the end of the story? Then... Wait, Tono. This far is a service. What do you want to hear first? The good news or the bad news? That's what it's called. Of course, so far, this is good news for you. You've learned a lot, haven't you? Oh, thanks for the info on this guy, Roa, but... Vaguely. I feel like I shouldn't listen to what he has to say from here. You're almost there. The trouble with Roa is that it is extremely difficult to detect. After all, he was born as an actual human child and has human parents. It is only when Roa is old enough to function that he will transform his body and consciousness as a vampire. As a result, the human does not show any glimpse of being a vampire, and yet, when he wakes up as Roa, he uses the relationships he has cultivated and blends in perfectly with society. By the time the church realized what was going on, it was too late, and the city had already turned into a dead city. I can't make the appropriate affirmations. The story is awful. I feel horrible listening to it. What's the matter, Tono? Your face is blue. No, that's crazy. I don't know, but that story is crazy. You were human when you were born, right? Then no matter how many personalities from your previous life are awakened, your body will still be human, won't it? Unfortunately, no. It's not the personality that reincarnates, it's the soul. Once a person's blood has been sucked by a true ancestor, not only their body, but also their soul is contaminated. Roa will pass all the information of the soul to the next self. Even if you are a human, when Roa wakes up, your body will also turn into a vampire, but... But... what? Tono is right. 
it's a bit weak. If the body of the reincarnation is mediocre, then the Roa of that generation will be an incompetent vampire. That's why Roa is still alive. So Roa decides where to reincarnate while he is still alive. There are two conditions for being selected for reincarnation. One is to be wealthy. If you are born as a child of a family with a high social status and wealth, it will be convenient for you to vampirize the entire city. And one more thing. This is the heart of the matter. There are some humans who have special powers. It's not a mystery that can be learned and mastered like magic, but a unique ability that the body is born with. Generally discriminated against the psychic or demon children, Singular ability is a physical thing, and it is inherited through the family, bloodline. Roa is talking about choosing a family of such non-humans for his new body. A family of wealth and fame, with more than human power behind it. That's the condition for being selected for reincarnation. Yeah, sound familiar? Do you understand me, Tonoshiki? I feel dizzy. Mario's mouth and a grin. Noelle's cold gaze. The fact that there is only one family in this city that fits that bill. And I hear a dry sound. <sighs> the dry sound I was making was the one I was giving. What are you talking about? Are you saying either me or Akiha is a vampire? No, the reincarnation is a boy. That's what the testimonies say. This generation's Roa is definitely the eldest son of the Tono family. I don't know. I don't understand a single thing this woman is saying. You said I was an enemy of Arquaid. There's no way that's possible. Then why didn't Arquaid kill me before? That's because he's only human until he's conscious. But well, the wind is blowing in the wrong direction. The report of the three of you is wrong. You are not the reincarnation of Roa. Akasha's snake is a different person. Yes? No, wait a minute, please. After all this careful talking, it's not me? What? Do you even read our reports, you little jerk? How many days do you think it took you to do the research? I'm 100% sure that Tonoshiki is Roa. 100%? If that's the case, then you've got the wrong premise, you offering thief. I'm the treasured son of the infamous manslayer, Cardinal Laurentius. You can't get away from it. You can read a person's ability in psychology in 10 minutes of conversation. This guy is, well, definitely fucked up, but an equally decent human being. I can't have such a pathetic reaction to a human with a vampire soul printed on it. This long story was meant to measure whether I was Roa? No, I'm glad to have my suspicions confirmed, but I'm getting more and more confused by this boy's personality. I mean, what kind of... We have no right to do anything about it. But it's not a complete waste of time. You can't change the fact that Roa is your associate. The boy shrugged his shoulders and got up from the bench. He had the attitude that he was no longer interested in me or my fate after this. Oh, what's the matter? Get going. I'm sorry for interrupting your love life. You're going after that vampire, aren't you? The true ancestor is a bloodthirsty mass of destructive impulses, but she still has some reason left. I don't recommend suicide, but it's a bad idea to stop her. I, I'm not sure if you're serious or not, acting priest. I'm not going to let you prey on more vampires. If he's not Roa, then he should be protected. You too. You almost got bitten, but you still don't know what that monster really is. Noelle stood there, her hostility bared. She probably has her own reasons for being hostile to vampires. But that's none of my business. Just as she has her own non-negotiable beliefs, I have my own that I need to catch up with right now. That's what I'm talking about. 
What I said earlier was just a joke. She doesn't suck blood. She's a good vampire. She's a good person because she didn't kill anyone? Don't make me laugh. Whatever vampires are to humans, they are evil. No, if we want to be human, we have to distinguish that framework itself from evil. If you can't do that, you have no right to be a person. If you're not a person, you're a target of my elimination. Think carefully before you answer. Where are you headed now? A voice forcing me to choose between life and death. If I tell her I'm going after Arquaid here, this woman will seriously try to cut off my head. Oh god. Chase Arquaid, hold up a knife without- <laughs> hold up a knife without excuse? Um... Yeah, I think the obvious choice here is going after Arquaid. Don't do it, Noel. Don't waste your energy. You can't kill that kid with your skills. You'll end up getting hit back. Huh? Why? Why? Because it's time for the tuning to take effect. You know you had a fight with that princess, right? You won't have the strength in your limbs for a month, so go back to the church while you still can. Oh. Ouch, ouch! What the hell is this? It's chattering all over my body! Does he have the ability to just, like, electrocute her or something? Lady Noelle in her nun's uniform gave way again, all by herself. This time, she was slumped on the ground. The rest is your problem. I don't care what Noelle said. Well, it's only human wisdom to go home while you can. This might be the last chance to pretend that nothing happened, right? I didn't answer and left the park. I can't waste any more time on unnecessary steps. I ran out into the night to follow Arkwade. Running in the dark through the city at night. There was no sign of Arkwade. The city was too big and there was not enough time to search for a single person without any clues. Maybe try her apartment? Let's focus on the target. If you're in the same area, you can spot her from a distance. Predict where Arkwade will go and make a mountain out of a molehill. Um, Arkwade's apartment, back alley, downtown area, maybe she's back at school? Oh god. Why would she be there? Um, apparently the back alley. It's downtown. I don't know for sure, but I think she chose the darkest part of town. Arkwade looked like she was in so much pain. I think that's why I jumped away to a place where I would never see anyone, where no one would ever try. It doesn't feel like a room. When I really want to escape, I think I will return to my place only after everything is over. But that's not enough. If I were to add at least some accuracy to this speculation, this is the only way I could do it. I take my glasses off. I drown myself in death. Lines pulsate in the streets, in the crowds, in every individual. I restrain my throat from throwing up at the eeriness of it. I don't know if this adds up to anything. Arkwade is a creature of little death. In this world full of death, she is the only one with extremely few lines. Then, when I look around the city like this, if I look for places where there are no lines, I can follow her without missing her. It's short-sighted, but it's the only thing I can do right now. A tearing pain runs through me. Look at the line as if you were capturing the whole picture without being conscious of each individual. According to him, this pain is a burden on the brain. I can't stay with my naked eyes for too long. I knew you wouldn't be on Main Street. The people walking through the downtown area were all ordinary lines. The figure I had seen before, with his whole body covered in graffiti, was nowhere to be seen. Press your temples with your fingers. As long as I had my glasses off, my headache would only get worse. Still, I run with my naked eyes, just in case that girl is on Main Street. Okay, it gets a little easier from here. Once you get to the back alleys where people are cut off, the number of lines will be greatly reduced. 
So hurry up and let's go to the dark side of the city. In the dark, where the moonlight doesn't reach, it should be easy to find her white form. <sighs> I'm tired from running and nauseous from the pain in my head. When I put my hand on my forehead, it was unusually hot. It was so hot that I could feel it in my palm. Even when I had a bad cold and had a fever of almost 40 degrees Celsius, it was never this hot. But here, this would be the last of the patrols. This is the alleyway where I first talked to her. If she's not here, I've made the wrong choice. Well, hopefully she is. Huh? When I stepped into the place, what I felt was cold air. A chill that chilled my nearly 40 degree head fever. I can see strange things. Beyond that darkness, sparks were flying. No, not exactly. A lot of deaths are mixing and matching and disappearing. No way, that's her. The confusing death lines belong to the dead. The fact that it's going away means that... Fighting alone in a body like that? I forgot about my fatigue, my headache, my stupidity, and the chill I had just experienced. I pushed open the rusty iron door and, sl and slid myself into the dark passage. The entrance to the alleyway. A narrow path between buildings. The number of deaths that burst forth is like a muddy stream. The number of disconnections is not less than a hundred. It's an anomaly. I know the inner workings of this place. There's no room for a hundred dead bodies. So the scene unfolding in the back of the room. It would be one death broken up into dozens of dead pieces. I don't know. I don't think about its meaning. What I can't stand. It was the creaking of my spine that made a sound every time I walked down the aisle. <clears throat> a sawing instinct stroked the mandola oblongata. Stop. Don't go. Go back. The future is not what you were dreaming of, he said. Shut up. We all know that. I can't turn it over. I can't leave Arquaid alone. If I run back here, she'll die on her own. I couldn't get rid of this feeling, so I stepped into the death-filled dead zone myself. Oh god, that looks bad. There. The, f the flesh of the dead was nowhere to be found. My consciousness freezes. My vision is invaded. Red liquid waste filling the ground. Traces of the dead. Faceless, arms crushed, guts ripped out, and needlessly violated. I, I lost my voice at the smell of blood and the cold air of death. The walls, the floor, maybe even the moon overhead. Here, it was just red. There was a dull thud. Perhaps it was the last one, but the humanoid, whose entire body had been painted red, died at her hands. With one hand, carelessly, without mercy, like ants. The dead man's hands were grabbed by an invisible hand and crushed in midair, blood and brain plasma splattered on the wall like paint. Arquaid? A, wor a world where even the moonlight is red. Arquaid was at the center of it. She is not aware of me. I just looked up at the moon, ecstatic, breathing hard. Oh no, not again. I can't talk to her. The creaking in my spine reached its peak. The saw seems to have already severed the bone. GG. My consciousness is screaming at me. It was a bad idea to stay here. I am screaming that I don't want to die yet. Oh god damn. It was too late for everything. 
neither white nor red. I was a foreign object in this space. The white woman turns around. Like a single-eyed demon, the eyeball looks at me. What dazzling golden eyes. We didn't see eye to eye. I just saw that eye. That's it. The blood in my body rushed, and the surface layer of reason disappeared. What I felt at first was pure survival instinct. You shouldn't be here. Don't look at that thing. Don't let it be known. Don't let them see you. We can't talk to each other. We can't coexist. We can't reach each other. The point is, whatever you do, don't do it. That's right, those creatures have different numbers. It's not that the level is high or low, but the standard of the level itself is too different from ours. Too different, too different, too different, that's why. All the blood vessels are distended. Fear at first. What came next was a murderous intent akin to glee. A bolt of lightning in a clear sky, the clearest solution in human history. The cells rejoice at the arrival of an enlightenment comparable to that of an enlightened person. Because that thing shouldn't be there. We don't need it. So kill me. Kill me now. Kill me here. Kill me now. I want you to get rid of that thing right here, in the pulse of my blood. My heart leaps. My whole body is screaming at me to kill her even though I know I can't win. What a contradiction. Am I supposed to kill her if I don't want to die, or do I have to be killed? Is killing the only thing that's stuck in my head? <sighs> no, 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 no. The ego's not here. Those eyes. Don't look at those golden eyes. I can't do it. There's no escaping her eyes. Boom, 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 boom. My blood boils. An irresistible surge of blood. But more than that, there is something that tries to break through the shell of reason. <clears throat> what do you want to kill her for? You don't want to die, so kill me before I kill you? I die laughing. It's the ultimate in stupidity. You don't need a reason to kill. Come on, be honest with me, Tonoshiki. A long time ago, you killed that woman. Well, it really wasn't that long ago. Come on. No, it is this reason that shuts up. You're absolutely right. I just want her, Arkwade. I knew that from the first time I saw her. I knew that I was going to vomit. Yes, I want it all. Mind and body. No tears, no saliva. Blood, flesh, desire, and frustration. Breathing is erratic. I can't stay conscious. Gold eyes flickering in the dusk. It is. You can't kill enough of them. Shiki? The woman's eyes return to red. But now it's too late. It was too late for that. Oh god. I heard a stifled scream. I don't care. Take the knife and push the woman's body down. A woman's body has no strength. It is easy to hold her down. Well, she is kind of an exception, though. I put my arm around the woman's neck and swung the other arm holding the knife high in the air. The rest. Just drop this blow into that cleavage. Calm down, Shiki. You can't use that eye anymore. I hear a woman's voice. The core of my head is boiling over. Shut up. My arms tightened around the neck. The woman raises her chin in pain. Unbelievable. Such a strong life, but now I can't even shake off this one arm. Shiki! The woman panted, her breathing labored. Boom. My heart pulsated with the rush of blood. Huh, huh, huh. Breathing is disturbed. I, can, I can't see properly. My body seems to have turned into lava. 
hot, I'm hot, 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 and I need to be released right now. <laughs> Shift your body. Slide your hips onto the woman. Let Orquade's legs open and sink her body between them. Okay, this is sounding weirdly sexual. Shiki. She stares at me anxiously. The way she looked at me made my brain boil. <laughs> I feel bloodshot. I feel like I'm going to faint. Every cell in your body is rejoicing that you were born for this moment. If I don't get this woman right now, I'm going to go crazy for sure. Vermilion covered cheeks. A soft neck. A woman's body, no more, under me. Ha, ha, ha. I can feel the dynamism in the air. <laughs> Golden, eyes that seem to suck in even the soul. My arms leave her neck. I went on to touch the woman's chest. Yeah, this is getting very sexual. Wow. Uh, so much for no H scenes, right? I touched her body, touched her legs. I crawled my fingers over the white body and felt the body heat in the flesh. No, it's not. This is not Shiki. I'm not sure what to do. A feverish voice, pleading red eyes, so my thoughts were completely rattled. No. I heard a voice that sounded like it was stifling shame. The woman desperately tried to push me away with both hands. I grabbed both of her arms, hold her down to the ground so she can't move. Would it have been better if it had been a nail? The figure of the woman with her hands held down looks like a crucifixion sacrifice. Her eyes glared back at the man who was on top of her, hatefully, obviously regretful. Her appearance was even more glamorous. I can't use my arms either. If I let go, the woman will definitely cut off my head. I smiled at the tension. It's more appropriate for animals to kill each other than to rape each other. Don't, 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 no. One arm grabs the woman's white, white, beautiful throat. The only mouth that is free sets its teeth on the woman's chest. Shiki, calm down. Her body twitches and she's still resisting like that. Ha, 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 ha. The man's wild breath traced down the woman's stomach. I'm guessing all the blood is just tur really turning Shiki on. Oh. It was so sensitive that it made the woman squirm. I crawl my tongue over the white skin while shifting my clothes. Yeah, this is about to get real fucking weird. Suddenly, I remembered that I was hungry. That's right, my stomach was always empty. I was always hungry. I drool with an appetite I've never had before. Shiki, no. The woman's arms were straining, but her appetite was stronger now. That's right. What are you waiting for? It's, this is the same meal I had earlier. I was on the side of the one to be eaten then. Now I'm on the side of the eaters. As a life form, we may be different, but as a living organism, we do the same thing. The blood sucking in the park, this silly urge, and the hamburger at noon were no different. We eat because we need to. We eat because it's fun. We eat because we want. We devour each other because we love each other. That's it. That's all animals are. Resistance is inevitable. The two beasts rise and fall with a bang. There is solid proof of a woman with a good shape. Oh, man. This just keeps getting more and more sexual. <laughs> As it was, he brushed his teeth against one of the breasts. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh... Uh, yeah, th this has already gone too far. <laughs> I jumped, my body arching back. I grind my teeth until I'm on the verge of biting it off, and run my tongue over it as if to taste it. <laughs> oh my god. Shiki, stop. The woman's body temperature rises. There was no sign of that coldness anymore. Perhaps embarrassed by this, the woman struggled to keep her voice down. Shiki, you can't do this. A pitying voice. 
I'm dazed. A sorrowful voice. I don't know. I don't hear that. The knife goes up. The vermilion color of the eyeballs bled. I want to kill myself so badly. I can't stop my body. My own body. Unstoppable. This is the first time I've been able to get a hold of one. With moist eyes, the woman wept and said, No, 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 no. I get a headache. My instincts are screaming at me to keep running. If I stop here, I'm dead. But I'm crying. The one with the impossibly straightforward smile is crying. I can't believe it. I can't forgive him. If it were me, I would never... I would never, ever make you cry. I yell at them to run. A headache runs through me. I scream at myself to run. The conflicting impulses make me feel dizzy. I finally ask myself what I want to do. Okay, I think it's obvious what choice we should make here. One, I just want it. Two, I can't do anything I don't want to. Obviously, we should not do what Shiki might be about to do here. I had this headache once, and I killed her. I can't do it. I can't do anything to make Arquaid cry again. So, never again. Even if my brain burns out, I will never defile Arquaid. Ugh. I left Arquaid. My headache is gone and my heart is back to normal. The violent emotions I had felt earlier were gone, and I finally realized what I had been doing. Yeah, you were about to become a rapist. I can't believe it, but I remember it clearly. I remember pushing Arquay down. I strangled her and tried to stab her with a knife. I, I remember how I sought her skin like an animal. There are no words. Arquay stood up, straightening her clothes. I don't know how to apologize. I'm sorry is not the right word to use. Don't worry about it. I'm the one who should be apologizing. No, it's not. I'm the one who's wrong. What's with the chronic anemia? What's with the dizziness that never wakes me up? It really doesn't matter. If I had been better, this wouldn't have happened. Shiki has seen my evil eye. There's no way I can control it. I told you that the vampire's eye is the magic eye of fascination. It's a curse that makes you its prisoner regardless of the feelings of those who see it. So don't worry about it. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's a curse, Arkwade says coldly. But it's not. It's true that the reason I went crazy was because I saw the golden eyes. But that was just the beginning. I was really, truly deep down in my heart at that time. Don't be selfish. I was out of my mind earlier. I was thirsty, and I couldn't solve it on my own. So I found dead people to vent to. You just got caught up in it. I took control of your body regardless of your mind. Even the thing in the park. I almost ruined Shiki's life. Arkwade's voice trailed off painfully. Biting her lip, Arkwade apologized to me with her whole body. Without words. It hurts my heart to be apologized to like that. It's not like I was being manipulated. Arkwade. I'm... Don't apologize. Shiki, this was an accident. Arkwade said, and walked quietly away. I'll forget about it, and you should too. It's, it's better for both of us if you do. I'm sorry you're scared. Goodbye, Shiki. It's better if we don't see each other anymore, right? I was hesitant to call out her name. I reach out to stop her, but she doesn't move. Then Arkwade disappeared from the alleyway. Finally, with that forced smile on her face, like a rabbit bouncing on the moon, she turned, just like before. I want to catch up, but I can't. In the first place, it's impossible for me to stop her now. 